Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to be doing part three of Brick Nottingham Castle, and today we're going to be focusing on the interior. <coughs> if you watch part two of this series on the castle, then you'll know that I'm making it using old grey bricks, uh, inspired by the castle sets of 1984 to 1986. And there's three smaller builds that I want to try and incorporate with my castle. The first one is the wonderful Guarded Inn set from 1986, that's 6067. This is an absolutely fantastic set. Um, it's one of the many that piece together to make an extended castle wall. Basically, each end of the wall elements of each of these ancillary sets would join together using a Technic pin to create a longer and longer castle wall, which was really good fun to do. This set also incorporated obviously the inn, being a sort of pub with a bed upstairs and, and the whole front was hinged and the back was open so you could see inside it. And it also had this sort of turret on it so it could be protected and then on the outside, past the stable, was the outside wall of the city. So I really liked that set and I wanted to try and incorporate it. But if we go back to my castle, we'll see that we're going to have a great problem incorporating that set into this castle due to its size. It's actually about 12 studs wide, um, but about 20 studs deep which would be pretty much the full breadth or depth of my castle to what will be the wall of the Lego room. And if I put something that big inside and then have the wall continuing around these two edges, then it's pretty much going to be a castle guarding a single pub or inn. Now, that obviously sounds fun on one angle, but it's not got a lot of variety in it. And also, when the wall's up to about here, you're not going to be able to see a great deal of that uh, guarded in. So, very reluctantly, I've decided to not include that set as part of the inside of this. Which will also save me a good deal of money, no doubt. But there are two remaining sets that I wanted to incorporate that I'm going to. And the first one of those is the Armour Shop. That's set 6041 from 1986. Now this is a fantastic little set with a sort of red canopy over an area dedicated to being an armory. So a store for all the swords and shields and bits of armour and other weapons that the uh, castle would need. So I haven't bought this set because I didn't have any of these sets back in the day and I don't have any of them now. But what I've done is bought lots of different pieces to try and replicate that in my city with a modern twist. So I'm actually going to make my armour shop wider than the original. The original was 12 studs wide, but I'm going to make mine 15 wide just because I think that's going to fit better with these five wide wall pieces because it'll basically be the equivalent of three of them three of these um, and that will give me a little bit more room for adding in armor and so on i'm just going to continue the wall so i've got plenty of space now i've decided to put this wall along the back because my original idea was to have the back open with the uh, implication that with it being the Lego wall there, that the castle would continue on into the background, sort of through the wall, like I do with a lot of my buildings. But the only problem with that is that if I wanted to incorporate things like the armory, then, well, they need to be part of the wall. So I could make them part of this wall, but then they'd be facing that way and you'd never see them. So although this now will become quite a sort of oblong shaped castle, I'm happy with that because it's important to me that I incorporate these buildings. 
Right, so to give the end some definition, we need some sort of side walls for the armoury. Some sort of column pieces. Here's the other side. And this is why I've made it 15 wide, just so it fits exactly with three of these panels. You can see I've got a quiver, a small sword, a large sword and a battle axe all hanging up. And I've done the roof as a sub-assembly just to save me a bit of time. And just like the original, its back wall is the castle wall, but it has a continuing sort of walkway along the top here. So soldiers can defend it. Okay, so you see why it's got the side walls now. I think while we're here, we should incorporate a stair piece to represent some wooden stairs going up to the next level. And the castle's really starting to take shape. Right, then some battlements. All right. And there is our armor shop, set 6041, which is made a little bit broader. And just to finish it off, I've got, as in the original set, the 2x2 two two round brick, which I guess is some sort of chair, or maybe it's where he polishes the armour or something like that, I don't know. But I thought I'd include that just for old time's sake. And I've also made a modern version of the armour rack that was part of that set. I've got an old brown spear, a reddish brown bow, a nice helm there, and because my city's logo is the crown, I've got a crown logoed, um, which is much more modern than, than the sets that I'm sort of using as inspiration, but it doesn't really matter. So I've got a uh, breastplate there and two shields, and I can put this rack, I don't know, about... There, do we think? Don't it in the way of the door, do we? Bit out? Maybe there. And that looks good, gives a lot of interest, a lot of different shapes and colours. And while we're here, I've got a few of those shields, so I thought I'd also get a couple and put them up here as a reminder to those inside that that is there emblem and that's pretty much echoing the 6080 King's Castle from 1984 as well which had some shields above its gate albeit facing out in that particular one. Great so I'm really happy with that that looks good I think now we need to move on to this area and do another small set. So I want to do another small build for the interior here that we'll be able to see in the rest of the Lego room because this will be the Lego room wall. And another favourite from way back in 1984 was 6040 Blacksmith Shop. And this is similar to the Armoury but a blacksmith. So in this set we have a blacksmith hammering away on a cartwheel and he's got a furnace there with some extra tools and things he's working on and an anvil. So I wanted to replicate that set um, and it's quite tricky to do so actually because these uh, three tall 
slopes, especially these corner ones, are very hard to find. So um, it took me a while to locate those by Bricklink, but I'm going to uh, be able to do that now because I've got them all. So the first step is to add in some more wall, because all these buildings are built against the wall. And although this does make my castle quite narrow, it's not wholly unlike the real life one, because the real life one isn't that huge on the inside and um, does have quite a narrow shape as well. So I'm just going to put this column in here, much like over here and at the gate over there, just to give some definition. Missing one of the black slopes. And here is the furnace. So it's these two pieces which I believe were the hardest to find. Very rare because they're only made back in the day and aren't used anymore. And I've put in a new sort of pair of tongs as well as an old uh, sort of pitchfork and cartwheel, just like in the old set. And this actually incorporates with the wall so I'm just gonna have to lift that up a bit actually to accommodate this. Oop should have done this first shouldn't I? I'm just gonna support underneath when I push that down. Okay. dark bluish grey plate layer on. Oh, got hard to press all that down. And then we need more battlements. So we can have people walking right the way behind this chimney, just like in the original set. And there we go. Fantastic. But if we've got a blacksmith's shop, then we need a blacksmith. So I've got this guy, he's from a later castle set, but he is a blacksmith. He's a bit more interesting with his torso and face than the one from the 80s. And he's working on a cartwheel with a hammer. And I've got the original shaped anvil. So I could put that, I don't know, something like there. Is that enough space for him? Looks about right actually, doesn't it? So he can be working on that. And then just to make it a little bit more authentic, I thought I'd add a modified 1x2 plate with a fire piece on, just so it looks like the furnace is actually in operation. Again, that's probably something I should have done first. Oh no, that's all right, so that's fitting fine. Great. Oh, I really like that as well. I've had all these things ready to go for varying amounts of time and I've never seen them all together like this. So you're seeing it at the same time I am. Fantastic. All right, I'm really happy with those details. I really like the uh, shields up here on the tower. And I've also added some 
large battle axes, one either side of this door on the inside, because that's the sort of thing you see in castles. One last touch was to maybe add a jester to entertain the tourists that will be visiting Brick Nottingham Castle. And he's juggling with a white ball and a blue ball. He's from 2010 when he was released in a set 7953. So I just thought he could be standing somewhere, entertaining people, and maybe a third ball represented by this red one by one round plate could be attached subtly by a grey modified brick to represent a third ball being juggled in midair. I think that looks quite good. Right, so there's all the detail. Now, you might think, well, why am I got a medieval castle in a modern day city? Well, much like my El Dorado fortress in my uh, harbour area, this is a tourist destination. And it's very true to life because there's a real life Nottingham Castle and this is Brick Nottingham and Brick Nottingham Castle. So we'll have guests uh, eventually and I'll have people with cameras visiting and maybe there'll be people doing jousting and uh, mock fights and so on. And obviously so far we've got two employees, one being a jester and one being the uh, blacksmith. Excellent. <laughs> Well, I think we made a lot of progress today. Not as glamorous as the gatehouse, but pretty good because it's incorporated two sets that I've loved for a very long time. So thanks very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be continuing yet further with this castle. See you then! <laughs>